Hey guys, Jonathan here. Wanted to do a short flight today in X-Plane just to demonstrate the Garmin Pilot electronic flight bag. I am a new student pilot. I'm just doing my ground school now. I have done a couple of discovery flights and been fortunate enough to um, do a couple takeoffs, do a couple landings. So I am a beginning pilot. Um, I am just getting into the world of uh, iPads and all the flight applications, including electronic flight bags. And through uh, trying to decide what program I wanted to try to depend on the most, um, I was really impressed with the Garmin Pilot app. Uh, it seemed to be very intuitive, very seamless um, from all the tasks that are required from uh, flight planning, checklists, uh, taxing, uh, airport information, weather, um, you know, everything that you'd need uh, in your flight bag uh, to, to really have a, a fun and successful flight and to keep your task saturation down. I just really enjoyed it. Uh, when I was researching flight bags, I did not see a lot of third-party videos on YouTube for uh, Garmin Pilot. So I just wanted to uh, make this video, put out some information so that um, as you're re doing your research, uh, trying to decide what programs you want to go with, um, you would be able to learn a little bit more about Garmin Pilot. One of the cool things about the Garmin Pilot app is that it does um, have a free... 30-day trial that is fully unlocked. Uh, there's nothing blocked on it. Really lets you see the full functionality of it. And Garmin Pilot also works on both iPad, uh, Apple OS devices, and Android. Um, that's cool for me because I have a Android phone, and it gives me a way to have a uh, flight bag for a back on a backup device. Very easy. That has uh, internet service wherever I go. So um, I'm just want to do the quick flight here again i'm just doing this on x-plane i will take this up on a flight with me next week and maybe i'll do another video with it and kind of show you um, how that went in the real world but as far as using with x-plane it's really simple to set up if you happen to be a flight sim person um, you just go into settings and choose the flight sim option uh, and you just turn on use x-plane position um, you'd put in the ip address for the ipad in x-plane couldn't possibly be any easier to use. Works pretty seamlessly. Doesn't give you weather. Uh, that type of information still pulled from the internet. Uh, but it gives you GPS. So if you're practicing um, flight plans, uh, you're practicing navigation, uh, you can really use this well for that. So as far as um, using Garmin Pilot for the flight, we're starting off at KOJC, Johnson County Executive Airport, a uh, local airport to me here. We're going to do a flight today from KOJC, real short, over to KIXD, which is a New Century Air Center. Um, that is actually where Garmin has their uh, research and development uh, facilities at, have a couple hangars there. So, you know, it just kind of happens to work out that we can uh, fly to their facility uh, in X-Plane um, while doing a little review of their product. Um, just as a disclaimer, I am not associated with Garmin in any way. Um, I don't even know anybody that works there. I really just uh, enjoy aviation and excited to learn and really excited to use this app. And I just wanted to put some more information out there about it um, so that people could check it out. So as I've been using this to start my flights, um, I would go ahead and, and figure out my flight plan. Uh, pretty easy to enter and edit. I want to go ahead and go waypoint starting with KOJC. I'll add another waypoint to final destination KIXD. And it automatically gives us our direct flight. But I want to go ahead and show you how easy graphically editing it is. You could manually type it if you want. I think graphically is seems to be pretty fun. Um, tap, hold, drag it up to an area where you know you want. And it's going to give you options. Um, we'll choose this one. That's about where the auto marker is for this runway. And then I'm just going to drag this over to the approach uh, over here for runway 22 at KIXD. Um, now that we have that put in, we'll sit save and uh, we'll just go ahead and zoom in again back to where our safe taxi, geo reference safe taxi diagram. So, so it will show us our plane. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our GPS heading and then um, 
if we were really doing this flight and what I was going to try to do next week, we'll go ahead and go to our checklist. All your checklists are already built in here. You can download the specific one for your airplane and you can edit it, uh, put in new information uh, and then just drag it in the checklist where you want. I've done a couple of edits um, just to add extra things like transponder makes it really, really simple, easy. And it's it's got to be nice having when you go from airplane to airplane that you'd have a, a constant thing to look at. Um, if you know, you're going 172 to 172, uh, it might have a different checklist, even though it's the same airplane, because different people have different checklists in from what I've seen so far. So, um, we're going to jump on ahead. We've already started the engine before takeoff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unpause the simulator here. And like I said, we're already we're at um, behind what is would be the Air Associates building over at uh, Johnson County Executive, and um, we'll go ahead and assume that we are cleared for our flight, have our flight filed, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, release the brakes and roll on up to the runway. So again, if we go back to our map here, you can see now that the uh, as we're moving, the plane is still staying at the bottom. If you have it set up that way, you can uh, do several different things with the map. But then again, the uh, safe taxi is geo-referenced right on it. Um, I just think that's pretty good. It's about the way I'd want it. Um, if we were to, we're not going to take time to do a full run-up. But if we were going to go ahead and pull into a run-up area um, right here, when we, uh, when we stop, one of the things that's nice about this is that you can pull up split screen. And while you have lots of different options of things that you can pull up here, um, what I like are these widgets. The widgets allow you to go with the swipe of a finger back and forth to um, things like airport information and your navigation. You can add different widgets, but it also has your checklist right here. So, you know, we're off. We've got our taxi diagram. We know where we are. So if we're at an unusual airport, um, we still have that information. We know where we're at. We can see it. It didn't go away. We didn't have to go to different menus, but we still have our checklist so we can do our run up, you know, park and brake, move, move on up to, uh, you know, throttle to 1800, get through all that. We'll assume all that's done. Again, just keeping things nice and simple. As we uh, uh, progress here, I'll show you a little bit how this moves on. Um, if we need airport information, uh, we're at Johnson County right now, but as we're flying, this will continue to monitor our progress. And when we get to our, towards our destination at KIXD, um, it's going to give us uh, the proper airport information, and um, we'll, we'll be able to look at exactly what we want for runways, frequencies, uh, airport information, our current winds. All that comes up and kind of follows your flight with you. Uh, seems to be, again, really intuitive. Uh, if I can't imagine trying to design anything that would work better than that. So we'll assume that we've done our run-up and we are free to go ahead and do our takeoff. Again, I'm trying to keep this uh, as brief as possible. Didn't want to put a 30-minute video out there to do a 12-minute flight. We'll just go ahead and roll on out to the runway. Now, usually what I like to do if I'm getting ready to do a takeoff here, um, I will go ahead and pull up my synthetic vision which again you can show see here is, is still on the runway um, this gives me the ability to see um, whatever obstacles might be in the way while I'm in low altitude flight so let me try to actually pay attention to the flying here instead of the iPad and talking and we'll get ourselves airborne we're gonna get rotate speed we'll go ahead and pull up and you can see um, from watching the screen and the iPad that um, it's following along with our altitude. All the information looks to be pretty good. Um, one of the things that uh, I've heard some different comments about is the flight ball here. Um, so your flight coordination indicator is that bottom of the triangle. If you fly uncoordinated, it shifts off. Um, I've heard some people say that they're not thrilled with that. Um, I kind of like the fact of trying to keep the, the synthetic vision uh, as uncluttered as possible. So I, I personally do like it. Um, again, we'll see as I become a more experienced pilot if that changes or if I get even more used to it. Um, as we're approaching pattern altitude, I'll go ahead and uh, 
do my turn here. Um, I'm not going to try to fly perfect patterns or, or, you know, do everything that you probably would need to do if you were um, really flying an airplane. Uh, I just kind of want to expedite this and get on through um, uh, the demonstration. So, uh, again, if we were at altitude and wasn't worrying about anything as far as um, things we might impact in the air, I would go ahead and go back to the map, get off of synthetic vision, and then I'll probably zoom out so we get a little bit of... Uh, Get a little bit of uh, perspective on where we're flying. Um, again, the the map is geo-referenced. You can do, do true north. You can do all sorts of different things. Uh, pretty versatile. Um, if we were doing a longer flight and trying to get set up autopilot, cruise, anything like that, we could go off navigation, um, go on to different checklists, uh, do all sorts of different, you know, and we could set things up to remind ourselves to do certain things in flight. And keep that going but then we could still just finger swipe back and get back to our navigation so um, as we uh, get on our path here I do want to show you how the navigation works so we do have um, a pretty you know encompassing display that has our ETA to destination and, and, and miles to destination um, it has a uh, uh, destination for our next point uh, has information about that has ground speed and altitude but I also want to point out the fact that if uh, for whatever reason you're on airport information or you decide to have something like um, oh uh, we're pulling up our charts over here that we still have the nav information on the map so even though we're in split screen this little map here still really has everything you need I don't really feel like you lose anything when you go to that. Um, I'm, I am going to go back to my widgets. Again, that still moves pretty well, but I just like the widgets because it's got what I want without having to, um, you know, go through a bunch of different sub menus and it, it's just right there. Uh, the nav map is always is always present. Um, because we're not again flying anything that was really filed and to save time, I'm just going to go ahead and make the turn and start heading over to our final approach. Um, the Johnson County Executive Airport just a couple days ago uh, had a, a severe windstorm come through and um, destroy one of the hangars completely. Uh, a lot of airplanes damaged four other hangars. So I want to say my thoughts are uh, uh, with all the people that are at the local airport there um, going through going through some challenges. Sorry, my microphone dropped down here and uh, hit my uh, flight yoke. That would uh, not be great to experience in flight. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a sad day for the local aviation community um, to go through those types of losses. Um, also, the Garmin family recently uh, going through a loss with a, a couple of um, engineers. One was uh, shot and killed, and the other one was shot and seriously wounded. Um, in, a, in a, a racial profiling uh, shooting that happened um, in Olathe. And so I, if anyone from Garmin does happen to check this out, I just want to say that my thoughts are, are with the, the families of the individuals and also with the entire Garmin family. It's, it's a sad deal, but hopefully um, we'll get some good weather and some good flying and everyone can have some, uh, some good times and happy memories of, uh, of loved ones very soon. So as we are approaching the airport, I do have the runway in sight on X-Plane. Um, again, I'm kind of shortcutting it here, so I'm not flying the uh, uh, most accurate nav, but just trying to jump points to show you some of the functionality of this in flight. So I will go ahead and, um, you know, if we were gonna um, do our descent checklist, we would already have it here. I can go ahead and we're at the climb, I'm gonna cruise, go ahead and go to descent. And we could go through things like our gumps check and and anything else that we'd want to make sure to put in here as a reminder, we would have that. And um, then if our, our checklists were good and we were prepared to descend, I usually like going back to synthetic vision and it shows you airports, it shows you um, anything again that you're, you could be coming into uh, uh, contact with, any obstructions. Um, if you fly out of the downtown airport, uh, downtown Kansas City, Charles B. Wheeler, 
Um, there is a lot of stuff down there that you could hit, and this thing will light up like a Christmas tree and uh, give you lots of warnings. Um, those warnings will pop up on any screen, so it, it's not just if you're watching synthetic vision, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see. And I have practiced some IFR flights on X-Plane, and if you're uh, in IFR category conditions and you get into a low cloud layer, um, you know, it's, it really keeps the uh, runway in pace um, right where you need it to be. Uh, follows it pretty well so that it, you know, gives you the ability to get through and break out with confidence. Obviously, even in the sim, I try not to practice going past decision altitudes. Um, so if you're trying to do a last minute check, you just wanted to check your uh, runway heights. Again, you can go back and do that. Um, we'll again go on to uh, IXD, New Century Air Center. Runway elevation, 1087. Pretty quick reference. You just have the, any of the information you need right there. We'll go back to synthetic vision, but now we know exactly what our height is to get down to. I'll go ahead and try to get, get my speed right and get lined up here and actually do an approach. Get some flaps down. Uh, in, uh, as you can see in X-Plane, um, this particular airport, uh, they have decided not to put any buildings that's already in there, and I've not seen any downloads for it, which is, uh, I find kind of interesting because of the businesses and things like Garmin that are actually out here, but um, there might be other reasons. This uh, airport has a military history, and maybe it still has some military activity, and so they, they keep that down for other reasons that I may not be aware of. So we will try to have a... Uh, not botched landing, keep a uh, pretty good airspeed up. There is no uh, Vassy or Pappy at this runway. Um, there is on runway 18 here. Um, it's actually a pretty nice uh, runway to practice things like night landings on. And you'll see that as we uh, touch down in both the uh, synthetic vision and also in X-Plane that the uh, everything happens pretty seamlessly, pretty, pretty well real time. So we're down under 100 feet, got the runway made, cut the throttle back, and start leveling off, keep our nose down. Not a bad landing there. And you'll see as our uh, ground speed drops below 40 here that we go ahead and get our safe taxi diagram that automatically pops up. I didn't do that. I didn't even have to program it to do it. It just automatically did it. Um, I've got to say that's pretty nice when you're going to an unfamiliar airport where you may not know all the taxiways and the uh, tower starts giving you your taxi clearances to get out of there that you already know um, your map's right there. So you'll be able to figure out where it is you're going. I am going to try to expedite this a little bit. Um, the uh, Garmin facility is in these hangars up here off runway, the end of runway alpha. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue on runway 22. Turn on to Alpha. Try to expedite for you guys as much as I can. I do appreciate you guys. Uh, anybody that stayed and watched this all the way through, I, uh, I appreciate your patience with this. Hopefully, there's a couple of things you've learned, or you know, maybe you're like me and just. Uh, Kind of flip around through YouTube looking at aviation video after aviation video and you just kind of kind of stay with them all to see if there's any more information you can get. Um, I'm trying to make sure I keep this short and uh, and put as much in here as I can, uh, you know, especially being a new pilot. Just trying to really demonstrate again what uh, what Garmin Pilot can do for in the hands of somebody that's so new like me. Um, just it can't, I can't imagine a uh, different app. I've checked out several of the different uh, popular apps and none of them felt as immediately ready to go, ready to use, um, 
ready for you know me to be able to to totally manage my flight as what uh, uh, Garmin Pilot did. Um, I'm not opposed to uh, uh, learning about any of the other electronic flight bags out there, but again, as I enjoy this one, um, I just wanted to put some more information out there so that other people could see kind of what it'll do. So now that we've um, taxied on up to the uh, entrance to the Garmin facility, um, when we get parked here, I just want to show you a couple of the final features with it. Um, again, just with the checklist and everything, it's, I find it nice that um, you'll have everything with you. Um, it's already already on your lap. It's already going. You click done. Go ahead and go back to uh, go back to your map. Uh, if you need to call in anything, you need airport information. You've you've got those options there. Um, of course, you can always always go back to uh, the airport option here. Look at the full airport option if you needed information on FBOs. It's like any other flight bag. You're going to have the information you need. Obviously, let's see, there's IXD, and it you know, gives you current information, whatever it is you're trying to do. But then one of the things I like, besides the fact that we could go to our checklist and um, do even things like uh, our after landing checklist, securing the airplane, goes through all that stuff. But then also it's got an auto logbook. So you can see that even though we're on uh, X-Plane, it went ahead and generated an auto log. That was KOJC to KIXD. It has all the information in it. And in the logbook, you've got uh, endorsements you can have signed off. It, it calculates your currency. It gives you some reports. There's lots of things you can do. I go ahead and delete these because they're not, they're just SIM flights in my living room. Um, I will uh, start recording my discovery flights and, and additional flight training that I, once I get that started on here. But again, I just think that from the point where I simulated sitting in an airplane and said, all right, I need to plan my flight, all the way through to getting here, finding an FBO in my logbook, um, it just very easily uh, took me through everything I needed. And hopefully you'll give it a chance, um, play around with it. Uh, try the free demo out for 30 days and uh, see if it, if you feel the same way about it as I do. Uh, again, I'm not associated with Garmin, uh, just uh, a fan of the app, and I wanted to put more information out there for the aviation community. So I, uh, I hope you guys are uh, enjoying this, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you for checking it out.